Hello and welcome to another trip report. Where are we going to today? Island of Red. Uh -huh. uh, white, uh, W I G H T. Um, Black. Today we'll be taking <laughs> the Hoovercraft to the Isle of Wight. On the way back, we'll be taking the normal ferry. I'll combine this in one video. Of course, I'll also be taking the Island Line. will be a separate video about that. I arrived here by train from London. There's also a video about that. How oh, predictable, actually. Uh, anyway, um, I'll tell you all about this in the video. I hope you like this video. This is a helpful video to you. If so, give me a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more, then hit that subscribe button. But for now, let's roll oh, the intro. To the Isle of Wight, we went with the Hoovercraft. If you want to travel by Hoovercraft to the Isle of Wight, the best railway station if you arrive here by train is Portsmouth and South Sea. There is a shuttle service to the Hoovercraft terminal, but that's not what we did. We went by foot, and it's a really nice walk. The Catamaran fast ferries to the Isle of Wight are way better integrated within the railway station, but I'll show you that at the end of this video. Bus stops are situated at the front of the terminal building for the Hoovercraft, and right next to the area where you find the Hoovercraft, there are lots of leisure places along the coast. I mean, we're still in the UK and you find this pretty often. Personally, I describe this kind of leisure towns along the coast, typical British. The Isle of Wight is the biggest island that belongs to England. And the Hoovercraft between the Isle of Wight in the town of Wight and Portsmouth is the only commercial Hoovercraft service at this moment still in use. There used to be more international ferry connections with the use of a hoovercraft as well. And personally, I really like this kind of transportation. Because a hoovercraft can go over both land and water and everything in between. And man, it's quite windy, even if you have some distance from these hoovercraft. These hoovercrafts are quite interesting for a lot of people to look at already. I mean, it's a tourist attraction on its own already, even if you just visit Portsmouth. But we'll be riding it today. Right next to the hoovercraft terminal building, what's not that big by the way, there's a small fruit shop where we've stocked up some food before we purchased our tickets. We purchased our tickets at the ticket counter, but you can really save some money if you purchase this online. Some information about the steam railway, but also the bus times is displayed here as well. And I'll be taking all of this. This will be on the Isle of Wight train video. And of course, you can also buy some sweets at the ticket counters. The waiting room is not that special. There's a public toilet, there are some vending machines for snacks and drinks, and also for coffee. And that's basically it. Even though this space is not that big, at the side there are some more places where you can just have a wait. However, the capacity for the Hoovercrafts is not that high, so therefore this will probably never be that busy anyway. There's also a pickup machine for Amazon orders. Personally, I'm not a big fan of Amazon because I really like to support more local businesses. And as excited as I was to see the Hoovercraft coming in, I went to the window to look at the Hoovercraft when it was arriving at this beach terminal. I don't know how you want to mention it. Anyway, the Hoovercraft coming in. At this moment, for this Hoovercraft service, two Hoovercrafts are being used. The capacity for these hoovercrafts is 78 seats per hoovercraft, what's not that big compared to the regular ferries. These hoovercrafts have been built in 2016. Before you can go to the waiting area, your ticket has already been checked, so you are already a kind of checked in if you want to say it like this. And here we go. Today I'll be traveling on board of the Island Flyer. The entrance and exit is at the front of the vessel. I think it's a vessel. In terms of accessibility, there is an accessible entrance, but it's a little bit less good accessible as the ferry, but I will show you that later on in the video. 
The layout for this hovercraft is really simple, basically some seats but that crossing doesn't take that long anyway. And there is some extra space for both luggage and bikes. By the way you can take bikes for free on these hovercrafts but it's not in the peak hours. Just check the website of Hoover Travel because there they have all the updated information about this. The crossing only takes 10 minutes, but hey, let's do a sea tour. And to be honest, it's quite tight. I mean, it's okay for 10 minutes crossing, but it's not that spacious. But the best thing is the entire experience of being on a hovercraft. Actually, from the outside it looks way more impressive than if you are on board of these hovercrafts. Maybe you already noticed that the hovercraft is passing by the pier. At the other side of the pier you find the ferries that will be taking on the way back. The hovercraft ends up in the town of Ride and it's not that far away from the railway station. Because on this island you find a railway line. It used to be more but more of that in the video of the island line. So we're now in Ride. That was actually fun. In a couple of days from now we'll be taking the regular ferry back to mainland and um, thanks to the magic of YouTube we can fast forward to a couple of days from now. Even though we had great weather at the Isle of Wight, on the way we went back it was rather rainy, so a good day to leave. Before I dive into all details let me show you a little bit about the routes and the locations for both the regular ferry that I'll be taking on the way back, what is actually Katamaran, and the Hoovercraft ferry. In the town of Portsmouth the regular ferry, so the Katamaran, what is actually the fast ferry, will depart from a point that is right at the railway station. This is more or less integrated with each other. The Hoovercraft though departs from another point and you need to commute to there. At the town of Wright, what is on the Isle of Wight, you will find a pier and at the end of the pier they find the catamarans. And there's even a railway that goes straight on this pier. The Hoovercraft departs from the town and is a little bit closer to well, the town itself for that reason. But you can also take the train of course. Of course there are more ferries and also car ferries to the Isle of Wight. But the reason why I highlight these two ferry connections is because they are perfect for railway passengers. For railway passengers both at the Isle of Wight but also in Great Britain itself. And even though these trains at the Isle of Wight do go along the pier where the ferry to Portsmouth departs from. However, when I was here some construction works were going on. A new pier was being built for pedestrians only. And the railway pier was being upgraded. There have been some great improvements on the island line at the Isle of Wight recently. And due to the construction works there is a mini rail replacement bus. Well it's a very good walkable as well but since it was included in our ticket anyway and we had some luggage we just took the rail replacement bus. Once again as you can see on this map Right Esplanade is right next to the Hoovercraft terminal and Right Pierhead is right next to the terminal where you find the Katamaran fast ferries. And this here is the ferry terminal for the fast ferries. There's an information booth about the steam railway on the Isle of Wight but I'll be taking that on the video on the Isle of Wight where I also take the regular island line. And some information about the upgrade works. It's gonna be really pretty if I may believe this and I already saw something of this. There's some places where you can buy food and drinks and mainly some vending machines and also a small cafe but that's basically it. The railway station for the island line is right next to this and it's more or less integrated. It's not that big and not that special but it's quite functional and that's most important. The boarding area of these vessels is not that big and even though it's mentioned as an outside seated room, 
I didn't solve that, but maybe because the coffee shop that was here was closed at the moment I was here. This channel is mainly focusing on more sustainable ways of transportation, but I honestly have no idea what is more sustainable, traveling with these catamarans or with the hoovercrafts. If you know this, let me know in the comments. I know this on the website of White Link, with the ferry company that I'll be taking right now, that they do have really a good sustainability program. Once again, information about the departure times, ticket fares, etc. can be found on the websites of the ferry companies and I will link them in the description of this video. Actually, we purchased an online ticket for a later ferry, but because not all tickets for this specific ferry have been sold yet, we could board on one ferry earlier. What's very nice. These Katamaran fast ferries can hold up to 260 passengers. What's way more than the hoovercraft I took to the Isle of Wight. The capacity is around three and a half times higher for these ferries. The seats are basically the same as in the Katamaran. You don't have an overwhelming space, but it's a bit better. And the facilities on board, wow, well, this is bigger and the crossing takes slightly longer. So you have a little bit more facilities on board. There's some space for luggage, as you can see here on the right, but it's not an overwhelming space for luggage. At the back of the vessel, there are some toilets, but I'll show you in a bit. Because if you move a little bit more to the back of the vessel, there's a special area dedicated for passengers traveling by bike. It's quite spacious, to be honest. And there's even a sun deck, although it was closed when I was traveling on board of this ferry. And the sun deck, I don't know if you want to be there, because these ferries will go quite fast. I used my GPS while I was doing this crossing and they went on a speed of about 41 km per hour. I think if they have wind from the back it might be even faster. The hoovercraft I took had a speed of 51 km per hour. The difference in speed is very limited, especially for such a small distance. Oh, and this here is the toilet, because no train tour is complete without doing a toilet review. No vessel tour is also complete without doing a toilet review. Overall, I think these vessels are much more spacious and slightly more comfortable and a little bit cheaper. As you can see, you have slightly more legroom, but this is also a short journey, so it doesn't really matter how much legroom you have. It's not impressive anyway. This journey takes slightly longer, not only because these ferries will go a bit slower, but also because the distance that will be traveled is slightly longer. These ferries end up at the railway station of Portsmouth Harbour, what is perfect for if you want to continue your journey by train. And that is exactly what we did as well. However, before I go to the railway station, let's have a sneak peek at the White Link Ferry Terminal building at the railway station of Portsmouth Harbour. This place looks really nice and spacious to be honest. There's a cafe and lots of nice places where you can have a sit and wait. There are even some parking spots for bikes, but I think this is only for if you're traveling on board of these ferries with your bike. Actually, if you are at the railway station, I think this is a nice place to go to if you want to wait inside or go for a coffee. The railway station itself, it's not that nice to be honest. Anyway, I saw nicer railway stations. This is a terminal railway station. We took a train to London, and by the way, I do have a trip report on that as well. But you can also take trains to Wales from here, for example. Apart from trains, you also find international ferries in Portsmouth to France and Spain. But I already said that. I hope you liked it. If you did so, give me a thumbs up and like I already said in the introduction. If you'd like to see more trip reports, then hit the subscribe button. See you on my next video. In the description of this video on YouTube, you find a link to a map and on this map you can find all trip reports on it. This channel is mainly focusing on long distance and international train and sometimes ferry and even sometimes bus traveling to show you what it's like to travel on a more sustainable way of transportation.